about the importance of spiritual eyes being open. The fact that there is so much more. There's so much more of God. There's so much more of the kingdom of God. There's king. There's kingdom principles. There's secrets in the kingdom. As God makes it clear in his word, he says, I praise you, Father, that you have reserved these secrets, these secrets of the kingdom, only for these disciples who are childlike, pure in heart, and you've actually hidden them from the proud, the know-it-alls. I praise you, Father. So this is powerful. It reveals that there are deeper mysteries, secrets in the kingdom. It reveals this by this by the scripture and and God makes it clear in his word that not everyone will understand the spiritual things as it says in 1 Corinthians 2 2 14 the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God for they are foolishness to him nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned the passion translation says someone living on an entirely human level rejects the revelations of god's spirit for they make no sense to him he can't understand the revelations of the spirit because they are only discovered by the illumination of the spirit and so many christians think that just because you're a christian you're spiritual you can understand the things of the spirit but that's not true at all there are Christians who are just as carnal as non-believers. There are Christians who are being used by the enemy even just as much as non-believers simply because they are carnal minded and they don't understand the things of the spirit. And when I say things of the spirit, I'm talking about how, how the spiritual realm works the principles, how we can actually be a vessel of God, how God can actually flow through us, how we can actually receive anointing, receive impartation, receive power of God to do the things that we see Apostle Paul doing and Apostle Peter. Not everyone was doing the things Apostle Paul and Apostle Peter were doing. There's a way to receive the power of God. There's a way to be a vessel of him. And in the same way, there's a way to be used by the enemy. There's there's a way that some people have demonic oppression or possession. There's a way that that happens. There's a door in the spiritual realm that opens up and allows the enemy to have authority on one. There's these deeper things. There's these meat, this meat, this meat. And you have to move from milk to meat if you want to be used by God and if you want to stay protected from the enemy's scheme. I am so passionate about Jesus and I am so passionate about his kingdom. I did not always used to be this way though. I was a lukewarm Christian for a lot of my life. I've been a Christian since I was four years old, since I was a baby. My whole life I've been a Christian. I gave my life to Jesus when I was four. I remember it. Okay, but I was a lukewarm Christian for, for up until uh, uh, five and a half years ago. I was a lukewarm Christian. Um, and I loved God. I loved God. And I didn't want to be lukewarm. And I wanted to be surrendered. I wanted to be on fire. I understand that that was right and important. Um, but I was like stuck. And there was something that happened that moved me from being lukewarm to now on fire and so passionate for Jesus. And once that thing broke, once that once I shifted to that place, I never returned. And I literally like stayed on fire since that moment. Um, there's a fanny and flame you have to do. I'm not saying that it's all it's not all about feelings, but the fire ne- never went away. 
what was this experience? What, what changed me so drastically? What made me so full of passion for Jesus and his kingdom? Very simple, very simple, very simple. My spiritual eyes opened up. That's it. That's the secret. How did my spiritual eyes open up? I encountered God's true kingdom. Before I hadn't encountered his true kingdom. The Bible says the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power. The Bible also says if I cast out demons by the finger of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Hey, the Bible is clear. It, it, it's clear. Just the first time of me experiencing this, just the first time of me witnessing demons manifesting, being cast out, the first time of me witnessing people crying as they receive prophetic ministry, and then myself receiving it. Just one time, boom, eyes opened. Boom, eyes opened. I went from like seen in the spiritual realm like this to now like seen everything. I mean, I mean, I mean it just, and when I mean this, I don't mean now all of a sudden I literally see angels. I literally, literally see demons. I don't mean that, but now my mind had went from carnal mind to spiritual mind. In this one moment, this, the, I, I received this revelation of, wow, the devil's real. He actually has a kingdom. He's serious about his kingdom. He is, has even demons in people, like we see in the Bible. Wow. He is way more evil than I thought. On the other side, Jesus' love is beyond what I thought. I knew he loved me, but my revelation of his love was like this before, and now it was like overwhelming. I was moved to surrender in one moment because my, my spiritual eyes had opened up so much. God's love is so amazing, is so amazing, is so amazing. The, 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 the cloudiness of my vision before where it was like, why do bad things happen to good people? And I don't really understand if God's good, then why do these things happen? And do, 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 all of these like, all of these like, Conf uh, a lack of understanding spiritual principles, spiritual knowledge kept me from being in love with God, kept me from seeing, from seeing and knowing his love is amazing. And so now God quickly just gave me this revelation when I witness this, when I witness King Jesus coming and destroying the works of the devil, casting out that evil demon that's tormenting that person's life, my eyes opened up. Wow, 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 wow. This evil is way more evil than I realized. This love of God is way more, is way bigger than I realized. And wow, I just witnessed now that God does desi desire to, to, to destroy all evil, all torment from people's life, all sickness, all chains, all addictions, everything. He does desire to do this and he does have the power to do it. He does, I just saw it. And just in this moment, since this is so rare and, 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 and I'm seeing these people accepting God moving in this way that I hadn't seen before, it gave me this revelation instantly. Oh, wow. God has order. He has a way of working. There are like deeper mysteries and things of the kingdom, obviously, for this like man of God. It was a prophet of God to cast out the demons, like for him to have this power, this insight, know what to do, <laughs> speaking to the demon, go out. Like it opened my eyes. Okay. There are more complex things in the spiritual realm. There's a way in which things operate. It's not as simple as, okay, God exists. So if this is, as soon as you give your life to God, everything's perfect and dandy. You can do whatever you want. And um, your life will be literally perfect because God's just covering everything. 
No, it's not as simple as that. Um, and now when your eyes can open up like this, like what I just shared, and a lot of you have had this experience even watching us live at Fivefold Church two weeks ago, a demon was cast out of a girl, um, sp demon speaking out of the girl, I don't want her to preach. And that demon was cast out, preach the word of God, and that demon was cast out by the power of Jesus. Um, so many of you have had this experience that I witnessed. Many of you have had your eyes opened, like, like I just described my experience. Now, now that my eyes had been opened like this, and I, and I had this uh, humility of, okay, there are deeper things that I don't know, and I, need, I have some learning to do, even though I've been a Christian my whole life. There are some deeper things. I'm going to humble myself and be like a child and allow God to teach me how he wants and allow God to move through anointed vessels of God that have received this spiritual knowledge who can release it to me and I can receive it like, yes, amen. Thank you, God. Thank you for giving me this truth that I've never learned before, but I, I accept this. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So now this process for me, you know, how I've grown through this, grown to become passionate and on fire, my eyes began to open up more and more and more and more. Now I go to the word and I understand spiritual principles like the power of life and death is in your tongue. Okay, the, the revelation of that is 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 when we speak life to people, we are partnering with God and we're allowing him to bring life to that person and to destroy death from that person. When we speak death, we're literally partnering with the enemy and we're literally bringing death to a person, even though we're a Christian. You're bringing death to a person when you speak death. Okay, the Bible also says that whatever you sow, you will reap. Whatever you sow or reap. This applies to many things from money, what you invest in, the kingdom of God that you're investing in, or the kingdom of the enemy that you're investing in, the words you speak. The words you speak over your life, those are seeds. Speak good things over your life, you're sowing good seeds in your life and you'll reap a good harvest in your life. If you speak sickness over your body, this is a spiritual principle. You will reap sickness over your body. If you speak uh, a death to somebody, you are not sowing seeds to reap God's blessings and reap his anointing that he can entrust you with. He, you're showing you can't be entrusted with this. So like this right here is a spiritual principle. This right here is an example of how you can open up the door for the enemy if you're choosing to speak death if you're choosing to uh, uh, invest into the devil's kingdom, if you're choosing to set your mind on the devil's kingdom, you're opening a door, you're allowing him access. We still have free will in this world. When we say, I'm a Christian, we don't become robots, but we have free will. So you can say you're a Christian, but you can be living completely for the enemy. And God's protection will not be on you. you. You reap what you sow. God does not go against his word. Okay, so, so now as my spiritual eyes opened up, okay, the, God has shown us the way and there are these principles in his word. There are many principles in his word that when you read the word of God, 
you receive the correct revelation of his true spirit on the word, like what I just released to you. If you follow his word with this, with his true revelation and you apply his word and he will give you wisdom and strength to apply his word. I'm telling you when you do this, it is like foolproof. You will have abundant life in every area. You will be fully protected by God. You will live out the purpose in which he created you for. This is why I'm so passionate about the kingdom because many people are lukewarm Christians and their eyes haven't opened So they don't see how evil the devil is and how real he is. And they don't see how amazing God is, how amazing his love is. Um, And they don't see how much they need him. They don't see, wow, when we do things God's way, when we apply his word into our lives diligently and surrender, wow. We are being so protected from the enemy big time, big, big, big time. Not only that, but we are getting abundant life. And I'm a testimony to this in my life because when I was a lukewarm Christian, I had a good life. I was, I was a happy person, um, but I wasn't experiencing abundant life in every area. There wasn't abund- complete abundant health in my life. There definitely was not abundance of finances. I was struggling with money big time and needed the help of my parents completely and was living um, in a two bedroom apartment, sharing a room with, with one person, so three of us in here in LA. Um, and I was happy, but but I, I constantly, every day, was, was feeling a lack of uh, insecurity and lack of confidence. Like, what's my will? I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. I don't know if what I'm pursuing is the right thing. Uh, I was feeling that always, and I was feeling constantly guilt and condemnation for not being surrendered to God, having one foot in the world, these things in my life. And, and, but when I surrendered to God, when I started to really live by His Spirit, when my eyes opened up that we need to do things God's way, that there's these spiritual principles, and when we follow them, apply them, they work, and they work, we receive the abundant life. Oh my goodness, my life now, my life now, I didn't know existed. Like the abundant life I have in all, in all areas now, the peace and joy I have right now, I literally did not know existed. And so I'm bursting with passion because I know none of this happened until my eyes could be opened up. And I know that the enemy tries so hard to keep people's eyes shut, so hard. And I know that God has made a way for people's eyes to be opened up. He wants it more than anything. But the only way this can happen is when we become vessels and we share his truth. Amen. And so it's like I have had revelation. Wow, we really need God's protection. We really need, like, like for example, COVID comes And because of these spiritual principles, I learned because my eyes opened up, like by his stripes, I'm healed, number one. Number two, he's called me on this earth to do something important and I don't need to worry that I'm going to die because he needs me to fulfill this calling for his kingdom. Amen. I can rest and be confident in that. I can rest knowing that he'll provide for me financially just because there's a pandemic here. I don't need to worry about it. Um, the, the provision that he's given us, this abundant life promise does not depend on what's going on in the world. You know, so like through the whole pandemic, I'm seeing people just so full of fear, panicking, 
relying on worldly things, science and everything, and here I am full of peace, no worry at all, expecting God to move even more mightily in my life during this time. Um, and seeing him do that, seeing him do that, seeing him fulfill promises in my life during this pandemic. It, it's now 2021 is the best year of my life now. So far, it's been two, two months. So God's opened my eyes to see like we need God's protection. The enemy is not playing around like it's serious business. And this fills your heart with love for God. Like, wow, God, thank you so much, Lord. It fills you with so much love for God. People in the world and lukewarm Christians, they don't think that the demonic realm is that real. So they're under this impression like, live your life, live to be happy. Yeah, bad things happen sometimes. We can't, we just can't really control them. But, you know, don't get too crazy. You know, don't you know, don't do drugs, you know, too much and be careful and you'll, you'll have a good life. You know, that's, that's the mentality of people of the world. Um, it doesn't matter, uh, let's say, and I want to address the, um, I want to address the Lil Nas shoe and video and everything. Like people in the world think it doesn't, Oh yeah, like make a video like that. It's fun and artsy, not realizing doors in the spiritual realm that you're opening up for the enemy to have access in your life that can have serious consequences and only can be broken by the power of God. And even then it can be more complex of how to break a curse depending on how big your opening the door, how big you're investing into the enemy's kingdom. People in the world think it's, it's no big deal. Uh, they don't understand. They don't understand the things of the spirit. They have a carnal mind and they think that they don't need to take God seriously. They think that just believing in God is good enough. Like, yeah, I believe in God, so I'm gonna go to heaven. So I'm just gonna like live life here on earth and do whatever kind of, I'll be, I'll be good. I'll be I'll have pretty good morals and stuff, but they don't understand how the spiritual realm works. Um, and so my eyes open up to see, wow, the devil is really evil. And all of these problems, sickness, addictions, um, bondages, anxiety, depression, suicidal thoughts, everything it doesn't just come like chemical reaction or genes science no it comes from the enemy and by the power of jesus all of it can be destroyed people can be completely set free hallelujah so my eyes opened up oh my gosh this kingdom of god is amazing it's powerful it can really destroy every work of the enemy and my gosh when i surrender to god and when i live for him he's protecting me from from all of the enemy's horrible schemes all of them like this is where my passion comes from and and we you know what it you know do you know do you know what it's like in the spiritual realm let me tell you what it's like in the spiritual realm this is what it's like. Imagine if you were part of this Olympic team, you're going to the Olympics, you were, you were this, you had supernatural strength. Like there's no way you could be ever defeated because of the supernatural, superhuman power, strength, ability that you had. Um, but imagine if like your, your, your opponents, they were so tiny, like they did not stand a chance. It's laughable. But imagine if you were just like in this whole other world and you didn't understand the importance of the Olympics. What a big deal that is. Maybe you didn't really care for the sport. You'd rather do something else with your time. And maybe you didn't understand what a great victory it would be to participate in this. What a big deal it would be. So this is how it is in the spiritual realm. 
we as believers, as disciples of God, when our eyes can be open and we can get serious about the kingdom of God, it's like we are unstoppable athletes in an Olympic game and we are destined to get the gold. But it's so much more powerful than this because you're literally becoming a hero for eternity. You're literally changing the world. You will change the whole world as we do it together. The whole world for eternity just by saying yes to participating in this game, this Olympic game. Like this is how it is in the spiritual realm. When our eyes can open up, when we can get serious about serving God, when we can allow him, allow him to use us we become this unstoppable army for God and the world will look so much different. So many people will be set free from bondages, from suicidal thoughts, anxiety, depression, sicknesses, everything. If we can just do this. But the enemy's strategic scheme, especially in America, is to blind people to think, ah, there's not really a battle and you don't really have this powerful strength and it's not going to make so much of a difference if you participate in this. But the truth is, is that when you can do simple things like speak life to somebody instead of death, ah, if you could see in the spiritual realm what's going on, if, if, if you could see that the, the reward that you're getting for eternity in heaven just by choosing to speak life instead of death, this is why I'm full of so much passion and joy because I know nothing small in the kingdom. You know, like I know if the enemy if the enemy's tempting to lash back at somebody who's mean to me, for example, and I resist and I show them love instead, I feel excited. Like, yes, victory for team Jesus and the enemy did not win today and the enemy plan was destroyed today that the kingdom of God advanced today and this person's life they got closer to God's kingdom today if they don't know Jesus they were shown the light of Jesus they were shown the love of Jesus today which is their only chance to receiving him and to being used by him the Bible says that the kindness of God leads you to repentance. The kindness of God leads you to repentance. Not the judgment of God, not the condemnation of God, not the guilt of God, not the you're sinning and you're going to hell. Saying that does not lead people to repentance. And this is Romans 2, 4. Passion Translation says, Do you realize that all the wealth of its extravagant kindness is meant to melt your heart and lead you into repentance? Now, this is where I want to address, many people have been asking me, and I know it's been going like viral in the Christian world, just talking about Lil Nas X's uh, shoe, music video, song, everything. I haven't seen the, the whole music video. I've just seen like the news quick clip of it, but I know what's going on in it. I've heard of it. I don't care to watch that because the Bible says, set your minds on things that are set above, not on things of the earth. Finally, brothers, whatever, that's Colossians 3, 2. Philippians 4, 8 says, finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable. If there is any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. And so speaking of spiritual principles, this is another one. When we have revelation upon these scriptures, God really wants us to be careful about what we're taking in, of what we're looking at, of what we're putting our focus to. So I will not be like posting a big picture of it and everything. I'll just talk about it because I want, I want you to be seeing pure and lovely things. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, um, but if you don't know about it, Basically, he came out as being homosexual, he says, and then he got so much hate from so-called Christians saying, you're going to go to hell. And apparently, 
this is why he made this very demonic video um, uh, uh, taking out of context the scripture that says that Satan falls, Satan fell like lightning from heaven. The scripture goes on to say that Jesus saw him fall to heaven and now he's given all power to the disciples, all power over the devil, over every demonic force. You will trample on snakes and scorpions. So it was like taken out of context. The, the video was based on that. He put it on the shoe, that verse, and um, taken out of context, glorifying a fall from heaven. Um, and this, this video is very demonic, obviously influenced from the enemy, but he says that the reason why he made this video was because so many people, so many Christians were saying, you're gonna go to hell, 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 you're gonna go to hell. So hearing this so many times, it makes him not like Christianity because that's all he's hearing, right? And it's making him say, well, if I can be myself there, then I guess I should go there. Obviously lacking spiritual knowledge to know that no one wants to go to hell. It's the most, you can't even imagine the torment you experience when you go there. Anyways, what I would like to say about this is the kindness of God leads us to repentance. When we're talking about I was just talking about the power that we have as Christians, speak life or speak death. Oh, the power in that. It's exciting to know when you speak kindness, when you speak life to someone, oh, it's exciting to know like this Olympic match, you just had a big victory and all of heaven's cheering you on. Like it's a big deal. Like going through life with the revelation of this, this is what brings you joy. Like, wow, I'm doing something for Jesus, for the kingdom, for all of eternity. I'm helping God save people from hell. I'm helping people to know Jesus' love. Like, this is exciting. Hallelujah. This is the spiritual mind. The carnal mind's just like, yeah, I said something nice. Whatever, no big deal. <laughs> um, so, there's a lot of Christians with a carnal mind that are a lot like the Pharisees that were being used by the enemy, even though they're elite religious people, people of God. And they're saying to, uh, they're saying that Jesus is using power of Satan, that, that Jesus is actually possessed by Satan. They were used so powerfully by the enemy, these people of God, Pharisees, that they are the ones that got him killed. Okay, so there were a bunch of Christians being used by the enemy, speaking death, speaking death, speaking death, speaking death to him. And so the enemy uses all of these voices of this to then push these thoughts, push these thoughts to him, say, you want to stay as far away from Christianity as possible if this is what Christianity is, if this is what God is. The enemy starts to feed all sorts of lies, like it's better to come with me where I'll accept you. It's a lie from the devil, but these things get planted in, in, the, in the mind, but the enemy works through people. So we see this and, and the same Christians are putting this down probably, probably the same Christians that are putting this down are the ones that the enemy used to get this where it is today. The kindness of God leads us to repentance, not the you're going to go to hell. That does not lead people to repentance. The kindness of God leads us to repentance. So the, the kindness of God, people receive the kindness of God, how? Mostly through people, because God chooses to use vessels. So when you can be a vessel of God's kindness and love to everybody, the Bible says that when you love your enemies, then people will know that you are a child of God. That's how people will know. When you love your enemies, when you love people who you see as abusing God, you see as being such sinners, those can be considered your enemies. So God wants you to love Every person, every person that's mean to you, every person that's doing things you don't agree with, every person that is sinning, is doing things that you think is sinning, love is the answer. 
When we say you're going to hell, for example, or when we say don't do that, bah, that's not kindness. But when we can show love, now we become an, a, a wonderful representation of Jesus. Where people now are drawn, wow, so many Christians have been just like loving me so much and I have this void and stuff. And like, I see these Christians on here loving me more than worldly people. Like, I think maybe I want to check out church because there's something different here. The Bible says they will know that you're children of God when you love your enemies. This is how Jesus is shown to the world. Look, there's this amazing love that doesn't make sense. It's so amazing. It loves you no matter what. It loves you unconditionally. This is the light of the world shining and it, it draws people like, I want to check out this church because all the people that come from there, wow, this is something different. The kindness of God leads us to repentance. And there are deep spiritual things going on. Like you don't know someone's abuse that they had. You don't know the ways the enemy tormented people earlier in life that led them to be a nasty person or a sinful person or whatever it is they are that you are so distraught and mad about, you know, you don't know the, the backstory. And we have to just walk in wisdom to just love, 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 love. You see someone sinning so bad. With wisdom, we don't, this is not the place to correct. This is the place to love, love, love. So many people are trying think that, that that this correcting is the answer, but when it's strangers trying to correct somebody, they are never going to take that as love. God only intends correction to come out of love, where the person you're correcting knows knows that it's the love of God why they're being corrected. So really. One should only be correcting if they're in a place of authority, God-given authority, maybe a mentor, for example, over someone. And even so, that men mentor should be so careful as they correct. Make sure it's done with so much love. Make sure how they word everything, how they do it, that person knows, oh wow, it's the love of God that they're correcting me, that they're telling, they're pointing out something that needs repentance and this is the love of God, I'm grateful for this. We have this responsibility to make sure that the kindness of God is always coming through us to help lead others to repentance. Hallelujah. So, First of all, what we see with this, with that very demonic video and shoe and everything is, 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 is literally stemmed from Christians being lukewarm, not having their spiritual eyes opened to understand how to be actual vessels of God. This is the importance of becoming like a child, being humble and allowing God to open up your eyes. I'm so careful with, I'm so careful with my words. Like I wanna make sure everything I, I do is from God. Everything I say is from God. I never wanna be used by the enemy, not just one moment because it's big repercussions. It can be big repercussions in my life and in the person's life that I'm speaking it to. And, and, and this is the spiritual revelation. I'm talking about the spiritual mind that we have to have. Hallelujah. And number two, um, a lot of people are so shocked of this video and the shoe and everything. Um, 
because they don't understand how real the enemy's kingdom is. They don't understand, um, they don't understand how serious the enemy is about his kingdom. He's serious about his kingdom. Witchcraft is real. We read about in the book of Acts how people were um, led to, convicted to burn their witchcraft books upon encountering the power of God. Like, it was a real thing back then. It was a real thing today. Um, witchcraft is a work of the enemy. Um, so people are very serious about the enemy's work. Uh, the enemy has vessels of him that are very serious, that work hard for his kingdom. It's the enemy's scheme to keep that hidden, to make it seem like what they're doing is harmless and not like a work of the devil. This is a scheme like what I shared before. He wants Christians to think that there's not a big battle that we need to be fully invested in and that we have power to be victors in and what a big deal that is. The enemy does not want that to happen more than anything. So he has his strategic scheme to keep things hidden, to keep his work hidden, to keep his workers hidden, that they're actually working for him. So when we see something like this, it's more out in the open. But when your spiritual eyes are open, you know, yeah, I know the enemy is serious about his kingdom. This is just a little bit more visible. So children of God, our response to this should be, wake up. We see this. Our response should be, wake up. It's time to be serious about God's kingdom. The enemy is serious about his kingdom. We shouldn't be sitting around anymore, but we should be serious about God's kingdom. Let's wake up and, and, and have our eyes opened and, and realize the serious work that God has called us to. Realize the seriousness of this situation. Like we don't know when, I mean, look at, look at the plagues in Egypt. Look at the plagues in Egypt. The plagues in Egypt. So the children of God were, were slaves and the people in Egypt, they're living good lives. One day the plagues come and only the children of God were preserved. And not only that, but God did mighty wonders for them, through them, delivered them and brought them into the promised land into true abundant life that was better, way better than what the Egyptians had. And the Egyptians died. So there became this moment where, oh my goodness, this is serious business. To be serving God, to be surrendered to him, it's a matter of life and death. Like it's serious business. It's hidden certain times. And then something happens like the plagues and then it's seen, oh my goodness. Wow, this is a serious deal. I really need to get serious about God. Serious about his kingdom. Serious about serving him. It's a big deal. Hallelujah. And this is revival now. God has brought revival now. Revival is only here because there have been people that have gotten serious about God's kingdom. The mighty miracles that have been happening only happen because people got serious about his kingdom, serious about serving him, choosing to be serious. And God wants this revival to expand mightily, mightily across the whole world. But it will only happen when you choose to be a warrior in his army. A warrior in his army. A powerful vessel for him. Know that the things you saw as little are not little. They're a big deal. Even this, uh, this, this, the woman who traveled from, there's a woman who traveled from Massachusetts all the way to Los Angeles to encounter God. 
Now she came out of obedience to God. And through that obedience, flying here, she positioned herself to be set free from God, to be set free from the enemy by God, hallelujah, to be set free from the demon that was tormenting her because she obeyed God, positioned herself to receive. And on top of that, I put a video together of, of, of what God did. And it has 1.5 million views now on TikTok. So now more than 1.5 million people have seen how amazing Jesus is, how powerful he is, how loving he is. Many had their eyes open in the spiritual realm like mine were and were changed forever. Well, this is powerful, like just her being obedient to positioning herself to be set free. She's already being used as this powerful vessel of God for more than one and a half million people to have their eyes open. I waited 24 years of my life, of my Christian life, to witness what now so many have seen. So many have seen at a younger age. So many people, because they've seen this, because their eyes open, don't have to go through the lukewarm stage like I did. I went through lukewarm one foot in the world. And I know that I know that I know it was simply because my eyes had not opened up in the spiritual realm. Hallelujah. So God wants to use you mightily and will begin to use you so powerfully by you doing what you see as simple things. But if you can see in the spiritual realm, it is powerful things what you're doing. Powerful things when you position yourself to receive like you are right now. Position yourself to have your eyes opening right now. Share this live videos with your friends so their eyes can be opened up. Speak life. Speak God's truth to somebody. Encourage somebody. Ah, that is powerful work you are doing in the spiritual realm. Being used by God so powerfully. Wow. Hallelujah. Our role as vessels of God, when we see somebody who is who's sinning or how we perceive as sinning, the kindness of God leads one to repentance. And so when someone is... Is, is when someone is sinning, lots of times there is a stronghold that needs to be broken. One needs deliverance. And that can only happen by the power of God. So instead of seeing people, let's say like a, a drug, drug addict, instead of seeing someone like, my gosh, how are they doing this again? Like, you need to just stop. Like, seeing it in that perspective, we should see in this, have the spiritual mind to see what's really going on and see, oh my goodness, they need deliverance. They need to be set free by the power of God. And one of the principles, the deeper things that I'm talking about of receiving deliverance is positioning yourself and allowing it you have to want to be set free. Some people like the addiction or like the, the, the sin because it becomes their like comfort or their friend or whatever, right? So you have to decide that you do want to be set free. This is one of the principles in the spiritual realm. One needs to position themselves to be set free. Now we see with um, the woman who is set free, who traveled from Massachusetts, she shared her testimony that she unknowingly welcomed, uh, opened a door for witchcraft in her life because people were trying to help her and they had carnal minds, not spiritual minds, and thought things were of God, but they were actually witchcraft. And so she accepted that, not knowing it was demonic. Here we go, what the, the important need for to, to learn meat, to have spiritual eyes open so we can keep those doors shut. Hallelujah. So she unknowingly welcomed the, the witchcraft in 
that's that's how the demonic uh, presence was there. Torment became there in her life, and it was there for a while. I think it was for a year. I don't know how long, but I think it was for years. Um, but God has a way of moving in power to, re- to, to to break this strong demonic force. And so power of God was here at Fivefold Church, Revival in the Park. Similarly to how there was a location of the anointing upon Apostle Paul, Apostle Peter, there's a specific location where God was imparting anointing power of God. So God sent her to LA because she wanted freedom. She, she herself wanted freedom. She loved God and she wanted freedom. So she flew to LA, positioned herself to receive this freedom and the devil did not stand a chance. Demons were cast out so fast, so fast by the power of Jesus. But it was the kindness of God that led to this positioning to be set free. Hallelujah. It was her being like, I see, she said that she saw Jesus in my eyes on Instagram is what she said. So what I was sharing was out of love, obviously, because if it wasn't, she wouldn't have seen Jesus. Amen. So what I was preaching, what I was saying, it was out of love. And so she sees, okay, I see kindness. I see love, Jesus. I'm coming to be fully set free. So I share this to say when we're dealing with, with when you're seeing people with uh, doing things that they shouldn't be doing or sinning, many times they need to be set. They need to be set free. They need to be positioned to be set free. They need to be willing to come to church where the power of God is. You can't force it. This is a principle in the spiritual realm. You need to allow God to have authority. So how do we help people who are sinning? Or how do we help people who need freedom in other areas? Are not sinning, but they need freedom. How do we help them? Do we say, you're going to go to hell if you keep sinning. You need to stop doing that. No, because that's not going to lead them to receive from God. We want to lead people to desire to receive from God. We need to have these spiritual eyes to see people that are sinning, to see people that we think are sinning, to see people who are tormented, to see, okay, this is what's going on in the spiritual realm. It's the kindness, it's the love of God that's going to set them free, that's going to make them want to stop sinning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. May this be a learning experience, what, what that blow up of the big blow up. Oh my goodness, look at this video and the shoes and everything. May it empower you to be a, a true vessel of God, to see people differently, to see people differently, to see them how Jesus sees them, to see people that are in bondage who need freedom, and to have this heart of God, I want them to receive freedom. Not judging, how could they do that? No, I want them to receive freedom. And the way they're gonna receive freedom is when I'm a vessel of God. When I show the love of Jesus to them, it's gonna make them wanna run to Jesus, wanna run to the, the deliverer, the healer, our healer. Hallelujah. I see the passion for his kingdom arising in people. I I literally feel it like overflowing in me that God wants to impart this to you now. And God has begun to impart this to you throughout this whole, this whole message. God wants to impart this passion to you now. He wants to impart the opening of your eyes, the spiritual eyes now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Many of you, I, 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 God has been doing this so much. This past week or two have, has been moving people to surrender, moving people, moving people to really serve him, 
to want to serve him, to want to make a difference in his kingdom, not to be a bystander, but, but make a difference. Hallelujah. If that is you, just tell God in your own words. Tell God in your own words, just from your own heart right now, that you want to be used by him, that you want to surrender, that you do surrender, that you want to be used in his kingdom. Just tell him in your, your own words right now. It's so important to engage with him as a real person, as your best friend, as your Lord. He's with you right now. Just speak to him in your own words. I feel like this passion arising in so many of you. Speak to your father. Speak to him now. Speak to him now. God, I want my eyes to be open more. I want this passion. I want this zeal for the kingdom, God. I want to partner with you to destroy the works of the enemy, God. God, use me. Use me, God. God is doing a mighty work I see in your hearts. Just pour out your heart to him. Just pour out your heart to him. Hallelujah. Pour out your heart to him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God is, I see God molding your heart right now. You're receiving a Jesus heart right now. You're receiving his heart. You're receiving his heart for his kingdom, his heart for his people. You're receiving this, this compassion. Out of compassion, Jesus destroyed the works of the enemy. Like he was serious. Like I need to rescue my people. There's an evil devil out there and I have the power to destroy him and I'm going to. Like God is putting this serious business heart this heart of compassion in you. Thank you, Jesus. I release this heart of compassion. I release this passion for the kingdom. Receive this impartation of the passion for the kingdom of God, for the passion for Jesus, the passion to have his heart, the passion for his people. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Receive the fire of the Holy Spirit now to fill you now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. May it fill you to overflow. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.